This is the new 6th generation Chinese airplane, one of the most innovative prototypes of the last decades. The United States appears to be lagging in 6th generation aircraft development, while Europe is in an even worse position. Why is the European EFCAS project in more danger than you think? Why could the Chinese J-20 be the best option for a 5th generation airplane? Why do today's airplanes have more screens than a Tesla? Or why has China taken a step back with its fighter planes? That's what you're about to find out. And now let's go with the best 5th and 6th generation airplanes. The airplanes we know so far are going to pass into a better life in the coming years. All the allied countries of the United States that have been operating the F-16 so far are transitioning to the F-35. We have seen it in recent years with several nations such as Norway, Netherlands, Denmark, Greece, or Belgium. Germany, on the other hand, which until now was one of the countries that refused to acquire the F-35, has ended up bowing its head and acquiring several units. So it seems that the book on fourth generation aircraft is really starting to close. In this video, we are going to analyze what fifth generation aircraft exist, and then we will see what sixth generation aircraft projects already exist. To answer the definitive question, what is the fighter that a country should buy in case it needs a combat aircraft in the coming years? The future looks somewhat interesting, as a whole new range of fifth generation fighter manufacturers is opening up. During the Cold War, it was clear that the best planes were made by the Americans or the Soviets. Some European countries maintained high standards after the Soviet Union's collapse, but it was uncommon. Russia didn't have as much money to invest in these types of planes, so they spent many years without designing any planes. The American giant has had the monopoly on stealth planes for many years. Starting with the F-117, later the B-2, then the F-22, and finally the F-35. But these were the winners. In the United States, contracts are typically awarded through competition. So the F-117 had a competitor and the same with the others. Although it is true that only the IF-23 and the X-32 became aircraft. Well, if we add up all these planes and throw in tacit blue, there are a total of seven American-made planes. At the beginning of the 2000s, at that time, there was not a single stealth plane from any other country. Be careful not to confuse stealth planes with fifth generation planes. The F-117 was a stealth plane, but not a fifth generation plane. First, because its technology was very old, and second, because it was not actually a fighter, it was an attack plane. This second point also applies to the B-2 bomber and the future BTW-01 Ryder. So really, if we only consider the United States fighter planes, we have the FS-22 and the F-835. And this is what the United States has of the fifth generation, it doesn't seem like they're going to have anything else. After these, two planes will jump to the sixth generation fighters. Russia already has the Sukhoi 57 and is working on the Sukhoi 75. The first of these is a plane that is already introduced in the ranks of the Russian Air Force. However, it does not seem to be as good as promised. We know this because Russia wants to sell it at all costs to reduce its costs, but almost no country is interested, not to mention none. It's a twin-engine plane with great maneuverability, but it's not quite a success for some reason. India, initially involved in the plane's development and manufacture, decided to leave the project. Seeing that the capabilities were going to be much lower than promised and the costs extremely high. Moreover, Russia has been reluctant to share technological advances with India, so they will remain on the sidelines for now. The Sukhoi 75, on the other hand, is a light single-engine aircraft, and for many years the Russians had preferred planes that had two engines. But it seems that they have now bet on this idea again. With both planes, Russia has a large and small plane, similar to the United States F-22 and F-35. Turkey, for its part, is developing a fifth-generation fighter jet, the Taken Veras. The Turks got involved in the F-35 program. This meant that their companies would help design it and then acquire it for their air force. Initially, they asked for 30 units and talked about ordering a total of up to 100. However, the United States vetoed the plane's sale for national security reasons, as they were getting too close to Russia. Tensions escalated in 2019 when Turkey purchased the Russian S-400 defense systems. 
At that time, Turkey was expelled from the F-35 program and banned from the sale of the plane. A few years ago, they announced plans to develop a fifth generation plane themselves. When they realized they wouldn't have the F-35, they got serious about developing their own aircraft. Perhaps thanks to the knowledge they had acquired from having previously entered the F-30 program. And five in the year 2024, to the surprise of absolutely everyone, the Taycan flew for the first time. This aircraft uses two engines, and from the front it is somewhat similar to the F-22 Raptor. Be cautious, as a first flight doesn't guarantee anything, Turkey appears to be very serious. However, an aircraft flying and having fifth generation capabilities are two very different things. Another fifth generation plane that is about to enter service is the South Korean Korea Aerospace Industries KF-21. Borome, a multi-purpose plane specifically designed for South Korea and Indonesia. In fact, 20% of the project belongs to Indonesia. The plane's first flight was in 2022, and mass production is expected to start in 2026, with 40 aircraft for South Korea. They say by 120 units, they will already have around 120 units in their ranks. This plane operates two engines, and something important to say is that despite having stealth capabilities, the idea is to carry the weapons and anything else they want to carry in external pods under the wings, something that is known to break stealth. But they have said that in future versions, they are going to work to include internal missile bays so that this does not happen. This is one of the reasons why fifth generation aircraft are so large, because they generally carry all their weapons in internal bays within the aircraft itself. In this way, they do not alter their geometry, as it is known that this is the most important thing to hide the radar signal, right? I'm posting a series of videos about the advancements in stealth technology made by the United States. Do you have the video in the description? In the first decade of the 2000s, China began to design the J-20, a plane they intended to use against the United States to gain air supremacy in case of conflict. This plane was introduced in 2017, and by early 2025, over 300 were already operating in China. The plane is characterized by its immense size, being one of the world's largest fighter aircraft. Because China is a huge country, and also it has potential open conflicts in the Pacific with Taiwan and the United States, where the distances are enormous, but also in the southwest with India. So it was essential that this plane could cover great distances and that is allowed by a huge plane with very large fuel tanks. In addition, it is known that this plane prioritized maneuverability over stealth. This is clearly denoted by the canards, these movable surfaces at the front as they increase the radar signature. If they had prioritized stealth above all, they would not have included them. Something somewhat strange is that China has presented a variation of a two-seater J-20 in the year 2024. That is, for some reason, they return to having two people in a combat plane. We don't really know why this might be, but if it's because the integration of sensors is not as good as they said, it's very bad news for them. Another plane that China has shown is the J-35, a fifth generation plane smaller than the J-20. Truthfully, this plane bears a strong resemblance to the American F-35 when seen from the front. They have confirmed that like the F-35, it will also have a naval variant capable of landing on aircraft carriers. However, it must be clarified that this plane's rear view looks nothing like the F-30 and 5, mainly because it has two engines and the F-35 only has one. This is probably because engine technology is not as advanced in China as it is in the United States. That's why they haven't been able to generate enough power with just one engine. At the end of the year 2024, the Asian giant flew a very strange plane for the first time. We had never witnessed anything like it. As its geometry resembles a diamond, we can infer that its main objective is to hide its radar signature. Furthermore, it lacks both horizontal and vertical stabilizers, which enhances its stealth capabilities but compromises its maneuverability. What we know about this aircraft is that it is immense. It could be seen flying parallel to a J-20 and this seems small next to the new design, when in reality the J-20 is one of the largest fighter planes there is. The most surprising thing without a doubt was the fact that it has three engines. Not only because of the three air outlets that could be guessed in some photographs, but because, apart from the two air intakes at the bottom, the plane also had an air intake on top of the fuselage. Something absolutely incredible. 
The reason why this plane carries three engines is unknown, but it could be because the plane is huge and needs the three engines. Until it reaches cruising speed, it turns off the side engines and operates only with the central engine to reduce fuel consumption. Some are saying that this central engine could serve as a ramjet engine to operate at supersonic cruising speed. But that's impossible due to the fact that the air intake is on the top of the fuselage. I've already talked about this in my series of videos on hypersonic aircraft. In any case, it's another gigantic plane from China, perhaps to be able to cover much larger distances or to be able to carry more bombs and missiles. But honestly, there's no more information about this than what I just shared. But surprisingly, in addition to this plane, China also showed another one with a very strange geometry. We can't draw conclusions about the other plane due to limited evidence from a single low quality leaked video. What is clear is that China has been very serious for a few years now. Apparently, there are other countries that are also developing fifth generation aircraft such as India, Japan, and Sweden. But all these projects are far behind the others, that's why I'm including them in the same category. But what makes an aircraft be considered fifth generation? While the criteria is subjective, there is consensus that a fifth generation aircraft is a key requirement. It must be able to hide its radar signal and have good sensor fusion among other capabilities. But an aircraft like the Eurofighter which has very good technology and sensor fusion. Since it can't conceal its radar signal, it is not regarded as fifth generation. Look, this is the cockpit of an F-4 Phantom, a third generation aircraft, but wait, because this is the pilot's part. The F-4 Phantom had another person operating behind, so this is what was found when sitting down. The aim of sensor fusion is that all those instruments are not necessary and that the aircraft shows the pilot only what he needs to know. This is the case with the F-35, an aircraft that can perform all the tasks of the F-4, but it is done by only one pilot, and with a large screen and little else. That screen shows the pilot all the information he needs, depending on the flight time and what he is doing, using the helmet with the head-up display to assist himself. A fifth generation aircraft must have all this sensor integration to some degree. In fact, all fifth generation aircraft only require one pilot, although there are some that can include a two pilot version, as is the case with the new Chinese J-20. But it's not very clear why it would be necessary to have a second pilot, as if you have good sensor integration it shouldn't be necessary. Okay, but wait a minute, and the plane, this Chinese one that flew at the end of 2024, wasn't it a sixth generation? That's what everyone has been saying, but I honestly don't believe it. First, because it's still not known what the difference is between a 5th and 6th generation plane. The groundwork for future needs is still being laid when electronics will be much more advanced. So it really seems like that plane is just another 5th generation one, but with a somewhat strange geometry. There are currently several 6th generation fighter projects that are already defined, but these are very long term. It is estimated that they would enter service no earlier than the 2040s. The most talked about project is undoubtedly the EFCAS involving Spain, Germany and France. The idea is that the plane can communicate perfectly with other platforms, whether they are land, sea or any type. Even swarms of drones, including unmanned combat aircraft, can be deployed for very dangerous tasks. In reality, the EFCAS project is not just a combat aircraft, but a set of systems, among which is a new 6th generation fighter. But honestly, I bring bad news. Spain, Germany, and France have not participated in any 5th generation aircraft projects. Are they really going to be able to design a 6th one? Well, it remains to be seen, but from experience, we know that whenever something is done for the first time, it is not done entirely well. This is why I personally doubt the stealth capabilities of fighter planes, except those from the United States. Most importantly, they have decades of experience with this technology and have even shot down a stealth plane. As always, you learn best from mistakes. The Tempest is another renowned project involving the United Kingdom, Japan, and Italy. A project with several setbacks and candidates wanting to join. In this case, the United Kingdom and Italy have participated in the development of the F-35, so they already have some knowledge about stealth and sensor fusion. In reality, this project is called Global Combat Air Program, but everyone still calls it Tempest. Russia claims it is already developing a 6th generation aircraft. 
But this is hard to believe, especially seeing that the Sukhoi 57 project has been a disaster and they are not being able to sell it. China also claims to be developing a 6th generation aircraft. This is more believable, given the J-20's success and their significant defense investment budget. The United States, on the other hand, is also doing its homework, although for now in a very secretive way. In the 2010s, they announced that they started considering a replacement for the F-22. The Raptor was designed in the early 1990s. This replacement was nicknamed Next Generation Air Dominance from the acronym Next Generation Air Dominance. The idea was that this plane could arrive by the 2030 decade. There was even the possibility that this plane would serve both the Air Force and the Navy, but it seems that will not be the case. Each will operate a different plane with varying requirements. In recent years, the Next Generation Air Dominance project has been on and off and it seems they have halted it for a few months. To first analyze, without rush, what capabilities the aircraft must meet and then they will start its design. As mentioned earlier, the program is being developed in extreme secrecy with minimal public information. Several other countries, including India and Brazil, also claim to be developing 6th generation aircraft. But for now, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's more probable that they will join an existing project. There's even talk that Sweden is already part of the Tempest program, but it hasn't been made official yet. India has expressed interest in the EFCAS project and may consider joining. And Saudi Arabia has also shown great interest in joining the Tempest. So, having seen all the 5th generation aircraft and those that will be 6th, which aircraft should I choose? A country that would want to arm itself in the coming years. The first decision is whether you can wait about 20 years or if the aircraft is needed now. If the aircraft is needed immediately, you would have to go for a 5th generation one. And preferably one that we know is already working well. Besides, not all aircraft are available. To start with, the F-22 Raptor can't be purchased by any country other than the United States, so it would have to be ruled out. Then, this country in question would have to see who they want to ally with, if it's a country close to the West. The option could probably be the F-35, although here the option of the Turkish Thai or the Korean Kai could also be opened. In this case, the choice would depend on the relations that the country had with either of these other two countries. But both projects are very, very green. So in case of acquiring either of these two planes in the early years, the plane would surely come with a multitude of problems. Because, I repeat, one thing is to fly the plane for the first time and another very different thing is to make it work for battle. If this country were an ally of the other bloc, the option of Russian or Chinese planes would appear. If you wanted to secure a fighter that works well and is very versatile, you would have to go for the J-20. If you want a slightly smaller plane, the best option would undoubtedly be the J-35 and what about the new Chinese planes? We won't comment due to lack of information. But if Russia were to offer us something that was economically very interesting, we could go for the Sukhoi 57 or even wait for the Sukhoi 75. But this last option I believe is very risky due to delay issues. Yes, on the contrary, if we could afford to wait about 20 years to acquire a new plane, we could bet on a 6th generation project. Perhaps the most interesting thing would be to take an interest in some European option and try to be part of some program to get some benefit. Since the projects are still starting and it might be possible to adopt a new member. The American options for the Navy and the Air Force, it's not very clear yet what requirements they have and it doesn't seem like they have opened up to any other member. However, this may change under the Trump administration. On the other hand, the most reliable project in the other bloc is likely China's, given their significant investments in military technology. Moreover, given their wide-ranging interests, they may develop an interest in exporting combat aircraft, which they haven't done extensively until now. In that case, considering that option could be interesting. In brief, the future is becoming fascinating due to the diverse selection of 5th and 6th generation aircraft that will be accessible. Let's hope in the coming years we can see each of these planes at some air show. Thanks everyone, see you next time.